Hi, Ronnie. It's an absolute honour to have you here with us at the BFI, and congrats on this film. Um, I think, obviously, this film feels so much like a, a beautiful love letter to the pleasure and the pain of rock and roll. I'm curious if you can articulate what the magic of rock is and, and the way in which it shaped the extraordinary trajectory of your own life. It, it's a learning curve for me to watch all the ins and outs of my life and um, to have it settled on a, on a strong ground of art, from art school, you know, that's where it all came from. And my feet have always been on the ground and I can look at it objectively that way, my life. Um, I never got too carried away, but I'm nearly being carried away in a coffin. You know what I mean? Can you talk about the partnership with Mike as a storyteller and if the process of making this film brought back any particular special or, or difficult memories? Well, I've been a fan of Mike's films and, and documentaries, not that I've examined them, but... I had faith in, in Mike Figgis and uh, he's at the other side of the world tonight and um, he sent me a, a, a good luck, you know, but uh, I, I think he's paying a tribute through his eyes t to my life and, and I can't really um, criticise what he's done because I haven't really interfered with it. I want to, you know, um, I'm quite nervous to find out what, what he's done, actually, with the film. You have an amazing creative diversity in your work. Um, yeah. Talking about being a visual artist, obviously in this country we have such a great legacy of, of British artists and painters. I mean, people like you know, Hockney, Fabian Perez, Paul McIntyre, and, and of course yourself. Can you talk about that aspect of your creative work and your storytelling and how proud you are to include that in this story, this, this chapter of your life? Well, I've got um, a hell of a contributor in my uh, documentary in Damien Hurst because he's helped me through rehab, he's helped me with encouraging me to uh, keep, keep fighting on and um, to carry on as a painter uh, and he respects the musical side of, of uh, my talents so you know I'm blessed and somebody up there likes me. You know. They've always gone hand in hand the music and the art so I'm fortunate enough to have another slant on my life story, you know, as uh, an artist as well. I have that peaceful side, which is something I can do just on my own. And then I can rock out with the band, you know. Yeah, and I've done that all my life. Do you ever sit and reflect about all these great moments in your career? Yeah. I mean, I'm very pr privileged to, uh, to have so many great moments in my career, and they're still going on, you know. And finally, you have a concert coming up at the Shop of the Push Empire. Oh, that's another thing. Yeah, I'm exploiting people that I really admire. I've done Jimmy Reed, and uh, I, I took that to America, and I did the Albert Hall. But now I've got Chuck Berry, and I owe a lot to me getting off the ground back in, the, back in my school days for, for uh, Chuck Berry, and it's great to be able to play a tribute to him you know, uh, with this uh, Mad Lad album, which is coming out as well. So that's good fun. One thing really touched me when uh, in the middle of the film, um, you sing a song and you say, if I knew then what I know now. Oh yeah, and, la la film. And, um, and, and to me, that, that sort of, you know, broader question is if you were to sort of talk to your younger self, what would you tell yourself? Um, well, it, the words are helpful to They've been helpful to me, and they may help other people, but um, I'm lucky that I don't want to change anything, that uh, maybe I didn't want to know then what I know now. Maybe, you know, I would have been frightened off to do a few of the risks that I have taken, but my whole life's been a risk, and I love the way that it's paid off. How are you going to feel watching it tonight, do you think? Well, I had a run through about a year ago with, with Mike, Right. To, he was saying, this is the way the film's coming on, and he'd go, we're going we're to do this, we're going to do that. So, and, I, and he played me what his ideas then, and, and I was quite touched then, and I thought, mm. well, I can't look at it um, any closer, because, it, you know, it's about being about you. It, it, it's, a, it's a funny thing. You, you can't really get that. Well, did you what, find it what? therapeutic? Yeah, yeah. Ther therapeutic. I mean, if it can help people to survive, you know, and have hope, and... 
and keep on, you know, ambition. What do you think the rest of the Stones are going to think of it? Have they been asking you what oh, they like it, by then? They like it as much as they like this Chuck Berry stuff that I'm doing because it's live, <laughs> mm -hmm. it's a tribute to someone, and it's not me blowing my own trumpet about, like, here's my new album. You know, I'm paying tribute to Chuck, and hopefully this film is going to pay tribute to an era that I was lucky enough to be part of. So yeah. Mick will be buying a cinema ticket to get down and see it. <laughs> oh yeah, oh Mick Mac, he's really, um, he he's looking him, forward to, to seeing it. Would you charge him full price for a ticket? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, you know that.